today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv, and well, welcome to December. <laughs> nice and cold here in Utah, I can assure you. Well, every December, a couple things happen. I put on my festive attire and wear this nice hat that helps keep my cranium warm. And I celebrate December 7th. Now, Pearl Harbor Day for me has always been, well, uh, the holiday that really intrigued me. It's not really a holiday, is it? It's a day of remembrance, uh, I guess is the best term for it. But growing up as a kid, I was intrigued about this day that we didn't really get out of school, but yet we celebrated. And why did we celebrate it? And uh, My dad had served in the Pacific in World War II and come to find out this, this is kind of what started the war. So I really got interested in Pearl Harbor history. So today I'm going to show you some of the displays that I've done over the years, some of the models that I've done over the years for, um, for Pearl Harbor, to commemorate uh, Pearl Harbor. Last year we put out that piece on the USS Utah, and today it's more about uh, just the whole thing in general uh, in, in models. So stick with us and, well, let's commemorate Pearl Harbor Day. What really started me off was uh, back in the late 1980s, shortly after meeting my friend Chris Allred. He invited me to a display at the old Salt Palace in Salt Lake City to a uh, Salt Lake Golden Eagles game. And they had set up a display here of the uh, Japanese fleet that attacked Pearl Harbor. And I thought that was a really neat looking display. And I wanted to do something like that because I was really into Pearl Harbor. By the mid 1990s, I had a pretty decent collection of uh, Pearl Harbor um, models. And I went to the Sprague Branch Library in Salt Lake City and Sugar House and asked the librarian if I could set up a display for December 7th. And here is the display, the only picture I have of it, with my Finnish Utah, a few Japanese aircraft, uh, a few diagrams from my friend Chris, a torpedo that I built, and a Utah 1941 uh, license plate. So this was the first one that I ever did. It was there for a month. My next opportunity came in May of 2001 when the movie Pearl Harbor was released. And when it came to Salt Lake City, it was released at the Villa Theater on Highland Drive. I worked at Douglas Models at the time and we were asked to set up a display in the lobby of the theater that was supposed to be there for uh, about three weeks during the main rush of this, this beautiful new movie. So a friend of mine, uh, put together this wonderful display of Pearl Harbor using the uh, 1-2600 GHQ ships. Uh, I was asked to contribute some aircraft as well. I wish I had a picture of that display because it was actually a really neat looking display there at the Villa Theater. And of course, shortly after that, the Villa closed down. That was probably the last uh, movie that ran at the Villa, as far as I know. Anyway, uh, here's one of the aircraft that I supplied for that particular display, uh, a couple of valves, and there was a, uh, a cake that I put in there as well. Anyway, it was a lot of fun, and it was neat to be a part of something like that, particularly something that I was so passionate about. Uh, my friend Alan Kinney, uh, he and Jack Douglas put together uh, the uh, GHQ ships. Uh, here is the Japanese fleet sailing towards Pearl Harbor, um, again in the GHQ uh, scale. This currently resides out at my friend Loic Antheon's business, uh, Kitlinks. Uh, I just kind of run out of room to store everything that I've ever had, so he's got it on display out there. So that was May of 2001, and in December of 2001, well, I was asked to put together this display at Fort Douglas Military Museum. They gave me an entire room. It's now uh, in the East Building, it's now an, an office, but they had given me this entire room to set up as a Pearl Harbor display. Wow, how cool was that? This was going to be up through the Olympics of, uh, of 2002. So I was absolutely thrilled to have this opportunity. 
here we are in one four twenty six scale. Um, I had built scratch built many of the battleships from Battleship Row and made this little scene of Battleship Row. Um, unfortunately, most of these ships I no longer have. I, I still have uh, my uh, Nevada from this group, but I've chosen to redo this in one three fiftieth scale. Uh, speaking of 1 350th, the California is one that I did have in 1 350th already, and I put it kind of separate from, from uh, that main part of Battleship Row, and here it is in the display as well. I had done the carriers from, uh, from the Japanese, uh, the Japanese fleet in 1 700 scale, and that was also on display up there. It's very similar to what my friend Chris uh, had done many years ago, but now these are mine. And then the aircraft, the B-17 and the PBY and some of the Japanese aircraft, a mini sub, just some of the aircraft of the uh, Pearl Harbor raid from both sides. And that was in one of the display cases. Uh, here's a little bit better look at that PBY because they were uh, such an important part of that whole attack there at Pearl Harbor. Um, this is one that I actually used some automotive paint, some Caribbean blue um, General Motors uh, automotive paint, and it turned out pretty good, I think, for the base. <laughs> anyway, um, we'd be amiss if we didn't talk about Holly Ava and the, co the contribution of those American fighter pilots that got into the air that day and uh, returned fire. I did this display in 172nd scale uh, using uh, one of the P-36s, and the number and the aircraft are actually correct for what was at Halle Eva uh, on that morning. Taylor and Welch were the two famous uh, pilots that uh, got off the ground there from uh, Halle Eva. Now for some of the uh, Japanese attackers, here is uh, Lieutenant Takahashi. He was the dive bomb leader that hit Ford Island, and this is one of the... Uh, I want to say theorized, but one of the paint schemes that's been thrown out there as far as his, uh, his particular aircraft. Loved painting this one. This was a lot of fun. And this is another one of the uh, dive bombing leaders that attacked, uh, I want to say, Hickam. And again, the special paint job that was carried on that particular aircraft. All of these Japanese aircraft were a lot of fun to research and, and paint. I won't go through all of them, but just some of them. This particular one is a model of the one that we think torpedoed the uh, USS Utah. These paint jobs were a lot of fun to do because each carrier was just slightly different um, according to different reports. But we have torpedo planes, um, Fushida's uh, high-level bomber, done some of the dive bombers, the, uh, the valves. All of these are done in 148 scale, most of them using Fujimi kits, although some are Hasegawa kits. And then when it came to the Zeros, I used the old Tamiya kit, which is inexpensive and actually builds into a, a beautiful little aircraft. Uh, here's one that I had a lot of fun with, uh, doing the folding wings on one of the high-level bombers from the uh, Zuokaku. I painted this flight deck. It is a resin flight deck by a company called Just plain stuff. So that display remained up until the summer of uh, 2002 when I took it down. And my next opportunity came in, uh, I want to say about 2006. And I was at IPMS Nationals. They were doing a group build on uh, Pearl Harbor aircraft. And well, uh, I put a couple in here. Down there on the bottom left is a high-level bomber that I did, and also a torpedo plane just right there next to it on the right. This display was just up a couple of days at that Nationals. And finally, um, well, back a little over a decade ago, I had an opportunity, again, at the Fort Douglas Military Museum to set up a display for Pearl Harbor Day. And, well, you see the overall display here, how it turned out, but it was supposed to be something a little more elaborate. You see, they had asked me to set up the entire Japanese fleet that I had. Well, that took 11 eight-foot tables. So they decided to cut it down to this display here. And here we are with the, uh, uh, the Pearl Harbor in GHQ scale that uh, I had possession of at the time. And this was kind of a fun little 
uh, is well lit. I mean, you can see this really popped right there with a few pictures and a, and a uniform that they had. Um, I can't remember exactly why they chose to uh, focus on Pearl Harbor at this time, but anyway, I'm glad they did. Uh, this was the Japanese fleet, again in 1700 scale, that I had set up. And this gave you a good visual of what was coming to attack Pearl Harbor then on December 7th. Now, I have some of the, uh, the American ships, but their Pearl Harbor ones are in 1350. But I do have the American fleet after Pearl Harbor in 700 scale. And so just as, for fun, I put the three carriers that attacked the Japanese at Midway here that fleet, uh, the U.S. Midway fleet out. So there you have it, some of the displays and some of the models that I've built uh, commemorating Pearl Harbor Day. Thanks for joining us, folks.